easy homemade spicy baked beans with deliciously light potato cakes. The first big thing that I remember as a kid was bacon and beans. So this is like a little rendition, except we're using the most amazing pancetta. Ernie, come on, Psst. disappear. Go and chase the mice. Now, pan on, get nice and hot. I'm going to turn these beans into glamorous beans. Pancetta into the pan. Lightly season that. It's cured, so it doesn't need that much seasoning. Now, start frying off that pancetta. It's amazing how the individual taste of baked beans, they're somewhat bland, so I always like to make them a little bit more spicy. So, a nice, finely chopped chilli with the seeds. Chilli in. Now, a bit of garlic. Crushed. Phenomenal. Get that bacon really nice and crispy. Fry off the chilli and the garlic. And then onions. My top tip for dicing, finely slice downwards. Slice across, then cut down to simply dice. Bacon, onion, chilli, garlic. That flavour all contained in that little pan. Once you've sweated the onion off, a little bit of sugar in there. The brown sugar will start to caramelise, darken and enrich it as well at the same time. That looks beautiful. Now, a couple of tablespoons of cider vinegar. Deglaze the pan. It's got that really nice, powerful kick to it now. Spice that up with one of my favourite seasonings, Worcester sauce. Bring that to the boil. And add your passata puree tomatoes. Turn that down. Simmer the sauce to reduce. Then add in the classic baked bean, haricot beans. You can buy haricot beans dried or canned. They are packed with protein and have a lovely soft texture. Turn down the heat and let the beans absorb all that beautiful, spicy tomato sauce. And just let that simmer now. Five or six minutes. Now for my potato cakes. They're a fantastic way to use leftover boiled potatoes and are so easy to make. I'm making a simple potato dough by adding flour and butter to the mash. That gives it that nice sort of cakey texture. And it goes from this leftover boiled potato to this nice, light, floury potato heaven. Take a nice spoon of potato, lightly flour your board. We're going to fry these crisp on the outside and just nice and fluffy in the centre. Now, get your pan nice and hot. We'll start off with olive oil into the pan. Now, put the butter around the outside because it starts heating up by the time it goes into the centre. It's almost sort of nut brown, gently. Turn it over. Love that nice, light, crisp. They look beautiful. Now, take them out. Oh. Potato cake in the middle. And a nice, beautiful spoon of beans. Growing up with beans on toast as a treat, still to this day, after all those years, has not changed my love or attitude for beans, especially cooked like that. My smoky, spicy, homemade baked beans with light and creamy potato cakes, comfort and satisfaction on a plate. A fennel sausage frittata. The exciting thing about frittata is the fact there's no set recipe because it's basically eggs or whatever else you have left. For me, the secret of a good frittata is in the sausage. Nice hot pan, onions in. Generous on the onions. Heat, nice and high. 
season. Fennel seeds to give the onions a really nice flavour. Everyone's used to cooking sausages whole, but it's a really nice way of using them, taking them out of their thin skin. And what we're going to do is crumple all that wonderful spicy fennel sausage into the onions. It's going to release all that flavour a lot quicker. Really important to keep that gas nice and high. And the longer you caramelise the sausage, the more flavour you're going to gain. Six whole eggs. Give your eggs a really good mix. Flat leaf parsley, a staple in Italian cooking. Chop it quite rough. Some parmesan. It gives a really nice seasoning. Fresh pepper and a little touch of salt. And then get it in there. Mmm. Run your fork through it, so when you slice it, no one's complaining they've got less sausage. I'm gonna make it even more Italian by topping it with some buffalo mozzarella. Dry it and then slice it nice and thinly. Twist it. Mozzarella in. And then finally, finish it with that Parmesan cheese. Get the top just as tasty as it is at the bottom. My frittata needs three and a half to four minutes under a red hot grill. To achieve the best results, always ensure your oven or grill are preheated to the perfect temperature. She's ready. This is the thing I love about Italian cooking. It's about sharing, but always focusing on the ingredients. Look at that. I mean, it's incredible. A little shake of the pan to make sure it comes out, and then spatula underneath and just leave it. It's light, fluffy, and it smells incredible. And that, for me, is a dream come true. It's amazing how far you can take six eggs and two sausages. Wow. Spicy fennel sausage frittata, my ultimate Italian breakfast. It's a cracking start to the day. Your favourite, chicken thighs. First of all, we turn on the grill. The reason why we're using the thighs, i.e. the brown meat, is so it doesn't go dry. Season them nice. Salt, pepper, olive oil. Then turn them over, please. Come on, get your hands in there. Good. Don't worry about your nail varnish. <laughs> so there's no bones in there, so the chicken will cook really quickly. Why do you do it skin side down? Skin side down first. That will stop the chicken from going dry, and it will get it really nice and crispy. Turn it over. Good. See the way it's marked the skin now? Yeah. It's got all that really nice flavour in there as well. And we'll turn them every two or three minutes. How much do you love chicken? Lots. Lots. We're going to serve that with some really nice chickpeas. First of all, we're going to make a little dressing, OK? One nice teaspoon of mustard in, please. A little bit of olive oil. A touch of salt and pepper. Give that a really good mix. And then just squeeze lots of lemon juice in there. A little taste. That's nice. Mmm, that is delicious. Now look at that chicken now. <laughs> Colour there. Beautiful. Nice and crispy as well. Turn the gas down now and leave that chicken to griddle. Right, let's get the chickpeas done, shall we? Yep. So we've got peculiar peppers. So these are roasted, smoked, Spanish peppers. Have a little taste. Mm. Mm. I'd like you to chop up the cheddar berries and take off the, the top. I'm going to slice them in half like that. Wash your fingers. I will. OK. So these are small piquillo peppers. Yeah, it's a bit sweeter. There you go. Wash your fingers, please. Wash your fingers, please. Tuck them in. Three finger rule. Come on, Holly. <laughs> you know the three finger rule. I've been telling you that since six months old. Good girl. You're fast, aren't you? Yeah. In fact, you're faster than Jack. Don't tell him. <laughs> He'll get him upset. Shall I put the peppers in? Yes, please. Thank you. Good. And then give it a little mix with your fingers, please. Lovely. <laughs> Rump holes. <laughs> out. Come on. Out, out, out. Okay. Get out. Every time there's food, he's always there. He smells it from a mile away. So chicken's grilling, skin side down. Why is it on? Skin side down. Because it keeps it moist. Keeps it really nice and moist. That's right. Now, we'll start the watermelon salad. Watermelon, feta, cucumber, pan, nice and hot. Get the pecans, OK? And just sort of break them up. 
I'm going to start slicing the watermelon. Do you keep the seeds in? Yeah, seeds are fine. So you just make these little boats and go around like that. Now, with the toasted pecans, give them a little seasoning, would you please? With pepper too. Um, no, just touch your salt, thank you. Roll them round and just start to see them smoking, see? And now turn the gas off, please. We're just going to take half the cucumber and give that a little peel for me, please. That's a nicely dry roasted. Take them off. So from there, I want you then to slice around the seeds. And that's the watery part, OK? We keep that out. Wash your fingers, please. Nice. Am I still faster than Jack? You are still very fast. A lot faster than Jack. Now, cucumber on top of the melon. We'll mix it up in a minute. We're going to give that a nice little light seasoning. A touch of salt and a little touch of pepper, please. Crush those little bits. Pecans in there for me. Nice. Next, Greek feta cheese. This is kind of uh, easy. Isn't it? Jack, that fat lump snoring, you've got to get him out of here. <laughs> Hurry up, mate, take him out. Fat, lazy lump snoring his head off. Come on, out. So we've got that nice juicy melon, the cucumber, and now the cheese. We need something to bring it to life. Come on, taste. That's sumac, OK? That is very citrusy. And we're just going to season that lightly. Now, what I want you to do is to sprinkle the pecans in there. Mmm. What's that? Basil. Mint. Mint. Sorry. Minty. <laughs> Sorry. You get confused with Basil, your boyfriend. No, Daddy. OK, good. Keep it that way for another ten years. Fresh mint over. And then a little drizzle of olive oil. OK, don't mix it yet. I know you're dying to get in there, aren't you? Mm-hmm. And just some fresh lemon juice. Why do you roll it? It starts to release all the juice. So now feel it. So it's less firm, a little bit more squodgy. No, it's all that lemon juice coming out. Now, what we need to do is just have a little taste. Mm. Mm. What do you taste? Everything yummy. It's fresh, isn't it? Mm. So, that's the salad done. Next, a refreshingly light dessert of lemon and basil granita. Start by putting the juice of seven lemons and the zest of one into a small pan with a sprinkling of caster sugar. Stir over a medium heat until the sugar dissolves. Dilute your granita mix with a little water. Pour into a freezer-proof container, stir in a good handful of chopped fresh basil and place covered in the freezer for three hours. When the granita is frozen around the edges, lightly break up the mixture with a fork. Return to the freezer and repeat twice until the granita is frozen with a granular texture. Spoon into chilled serving glasses. Garnish each with a sprig of basil. Amazingly light and refreshing lemon and basil granita. With our granita and feta salad done, and the griddled chicken beautifully charred, we can put the final touches to our main course. I'll take the chicken. Look how juicy that is. See? What we need to do now with the basil yep. is to get the leaves. I just want to tear them in there. There you go. Eh? We'll start lifting the chicken up, please, and putting it in the chickpeas. Oh, that juicy, amazing chicken. Remember this little baby here? Yeah. A vinaigrette? The heat of the chicken will infuse the basil, because the chicken's nice and warm. Melt the basil and turn this salad into something really delicious. That smells so nice. Doesn't it? See how we've glazed the chicken? Slide that onto our plate. How gorgeous is that? Very. <laughs> Got that roasted pepper flavour, fresh basil, and those wonderful chickpeas with the caper berries. I think Jack will like this one. You think Jack will like this one? Yeah. Yeah? And Megan? Tilly this one. And Tilly... Really? Interesting. Let's go. Well done. This is my ultimate light dinner. Griddled chicken thighs with chickpeas and a lemony dressing. Feta and watermelon salad. And for a refreshingly zingy end to the meal, lemon and basil granita.